We've had a 6.4 magnitude earthquake today and aftershocks 5.4, 4.7 at the Juan de Fuca plate in the Cascadia Basin. It's basically rocked the whole of the Cascadia there and of course it's right across from Vancouver Island. The last time we had a very big earthquake at this area, we had the Ridgecrest earthquake as well a few days later. Now this is it right here. Okay, uh, basically um, off the coast of uh, Seattle, Washington. Juan de Cuba, the Fuca Plate is uh, a very dangerous plate, one of the most dangerous areas of the world. It's the subduction zone of the Pacific Plate underneath the North American Plate. The tectonics of the Pacific margin of North America between Vancouver Island and South Central Alaska are dominated by northwest motion of the Pacific Plate with respect to North America Plate and a velocity of a whopping 500 millimeters a year. That's going very fast. In the south of this map region, convergence between north extension of the Juan de Fuca Plate and North American Plate dominate north from the Explorer Pacific and North American Plate triple junction. Pacific North American motion is accommodated along a 650 kilometer long Queen, Char Queen, Queen Charlotte Fault System. Now at the southern extent of the map region offshore of Vancouver Island lies a complex triple junction between the Pacific North America Juan de Fuca Plate, which includes the Explorer and Winona microplates. And uh, the Explorer microplate tracks North America plate motion but its subduction rate is at 2 centimeters a year near its southern extent and converges with uh, subducts beneath the continental North American plate at 4 to 4.5 centimeters a year. The Explorer microplate heavily deformed by internal dextral faulting. Now the largest earthquake observed along the Queen Charlotte Fault was magnitude 8 strike slip the strike slip event even pulverized cement. That's how bad they are. That was in 1949, located 25 kilometers west of the north tip of the Haida Gwali. And this earthquake created a minor far field tsunami, an uncommon occurrence for strike slip faults. In 1970, 6.8 magnitude earthquake that ruptured 30 kilometers south of the southern tip of Haida Gwai as one of the first large magnitude events in the area to be recognized as having significant thrust component. More recently, the 7.8 Haida Gwai earthquake struck adjacent to the south central portion of the island. So uh, this one, as we said before, is a 6.4. It's not at all at all small. Now near the northern termination of the Fairweather Fault, the west northern trending transition fault marks the boundary between Yakutat Terrain and Pacific Plate. Now within the greater Queen Charlotte Fault region, excluding the Alaska Aleutian subduction zone, more than 150 earthquakes of magnitude 5 or greater have occurred between 1973 and 2013, with only a small fraction of these events rupturing at depths greater than 25 kilometers and none deeper than 35 kilometers. Earthquakes epicenters along the Queen Charlotte Fault Express and east-west symmetry, with the majority of seismicity occurring towards the eastern slope of the marine terrace near the definition of the Queen Charlotte Fault. So uh, basically uh, some geology concerning what's going on there. A lot of fault lines, a lot of subduction, very fast motion. I hope this is not a, I hope this is the main shock and not a, a foreshock of something coming. Please leave your comments. Thank you for your support and all of you there, please be very alert. Thank you. Please support my Patreon account. The daily posts are five videos daily and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below.